Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel or a very warm, literally, welcome if this is your first time. My name is Sheridan Coldstream, I'm a voice and confidence coach and this channel is devoted to helping you feel better about yourself. Today's is about being individual and discovering who you really are. So let's crack on, I'll take my hat off and forgive my hair if it's a bit of a mess. So let me start with the question, who are you? Are you your name? Are you your job, your career? Are you the things you've decided to do? It's a big question, isn't it? It's confusing for me because I was born in 1964, ah, a long time ago, and I was christened Charles. So for the first two weeks of my life, I have no memory of this, I was called Charles. My parents then decided to change my name to Sheridan because I'm actually Charles William Sheridan, and I've been Sheridan ever since. So straight away there was a confusion as to who I actually am because my passport and my bank details still say Charles. So lots of complicated phone calls and voice messages asking for Charles, which I find very confusing because I do not identify with the name Charles at all as, except on paper. So there, there, there's a confusion straight away. Um, the best way I can illustrate the idea of identity and working out who we really are is perhaps to tell you a little bit about me. So please bear with me and stay with this because my point at the end I think is extremely important and I hope of help to many of you. So I was born the youngest of three brothers. Uh, we were slightly, uh, not pigeonholed exactly, but somehow we grew up feeling that the eldest was uh, the academic, the middle one was the sporty one, and I was the artistic one. Now the danger with that is the academic probably felt he wasn't very sporty or artistic. The sporty one felt he was neither artistic or intelligent. And I thought I was arty, but pretty much good for nothing else uh, and didn't feel I was very intelligent. So uh, straight away, you're kind of growing up with this kind of restricted view uh, of who you really are. From the age of five, we, we were bought comics. My brothers bought the Beano and Dandy that were traditional boys comics. I wanted Twinkle for girls. And the reason I wanted Twinkle for girls is it had cut out dollies on the back with clothes you could cut out and fold tabs behind them. How girly is that? I also grew my hair long at this stage. And at the same point in my life, aged five or six, I knew I wanted to be an actor and a performer when I was older. So that bit of me was made up, went to school, never really happy at school, we always struggled to fit in, I'll come back to that one, and uh, eventually went to drama school, spent three years at the Guildford School of Acting, training in musical theatre, mm, sort of fairly happy sometimes there, but still struggling with who I was and my identity, and then became an actor for six or seven years before, more like seven or eight years before, turning to what I do now, which is a, a vocal and confidence coach. Now, it, very, very interesting. If we go back to our school days, for example, how many people struggle to fit in at school? I think this is the issue, because by struggling to fit in, that means we're compromising our true selves and pretending to be something else that we think is cool or that will be regarded as normal by other people. We observe this very much in 14, 15, 16 year olds at school today. If we take girls, for example, uh, and I don't want to generalise too much, but there's a, a huge tendency for girls to want to hang together in groups. And what's more, the groups aren't just groups, they're kind of labelled groups like the elite, or the popular gang, or the weirdos, or the individuals. Uh, and there's a temptation, of course, to want to conform and maybe even change your personality in order to fit in and be accepted as a popular person. Meanwhile, boys are struggling in other ways, possibly more with anxiety and stuff like that. And typically they grow up slightly uh, later Later than girls do. They might be a year or a year and a half behind girls in, in development. Also, between the ages of 12 and say 20, we're at school, we're being educated, and we're trying to work out who we are at the same time. So we're trying to fit in, we're going through puberty, adolescence, trying to work out what we're good at, trying to achieve academically, and generally trying to find significance and work out where our place is in life. Well, this is incredibly difficult because all this stuff is happening at the same time and therefore it's all too easy to fall into that trap of needing to be liked and be popular and sort of be the same as everybody else. But here's my point, there is power in being you, and I mean the only you. You are unique, you are a complete one-off. And by learning to celebrate that, you can be the happiest and most effective person in life that you can be. Um, I rem remember getting to 14 or 15, and I was always far more interested in music. I was that kid on the on the football field that, that stood, in the, stood in the corner wishing the game was over and hating every second of it. Uh, I got teased a bit, I got bullied a bit. I remember at one point being teased at school, I was probably 11 at the time, and uh, I was hiding in the
the boys lose, crouching in the corner of a cubicle, crying my eyes out while the bullies were still throwing pebbles through the window at me. And that was probably one of the lowest points in my life. And I don't say this for sympathy. I say it because by, by gathering that stuff now and, and giving it back out to all of you, it, it, it's kind of empowered me to celebrate my individuality more. At about 21, so I was out of drama school and starting life as a new actor. I met my now wife, Deborah. We've been very happily married for 30 years this September, which is in a few weeks time. And uh, we've been together for 34 years. So very happy, very content, very happy with my sexuality and all that, all that kind of stuff. And yet some people would say that all my tastes were stereotypically LGBTQ, so kind of gay taste. And uh, do you know what? I love this. I've got no problem with this. I love Pink. I love Julie Andrews. I love Judy Garland. I love musical theatre. I love antiques. I love chandeliers. I love all things glamorous. And yet I can still be me. I can be Sheridan. I think this is called being metrosexual. And I remember the other day we were staying in Brighton, right on the edge of the LGBTQ community in a wonderful apartment called the old photographic suite, which overlooked the wonderful, fashionable seafront of Brighton. And just we were just round the corner from the most fashionable part of Brighton's LGBTQ community. And we'd walk up the side streets and I'd look through the, the bow windows of these terraced houses and there were these fantastic emerald green rooms dripping in bling uh, and chandeliers hanging down. Went into this fabulous flea market that was decorated exactly the same as my studio here with broad pink and white marquee stripes and masks and clowns and things everywhere. And I felt so at home and I'm so happy to be at home being that eccentric, individually, uniquely me person. And this is my message to you. We live in a world that is full of boxes to tick. It's full of a natural desire to want to conform. It's full of people who feel more comfortable with familiarity than what is necessarily good for them. But my goodness me, if you can really learn to celebrate however quirky your individuality may be, you are on a path to the best kind of happiness. And I have to say, I earn my living being Sheridan. I get paid to be me for a living. And I remember years ago as a struggling actor, which I only quite enjoyed, thinking, I just want to be me for a living. I just want to be Sheridan for a living. And I think that's the key. If you can work out what defines who you are, then everything, your career, your job choice, whatever you end up doing, will just fall into place. Then the money will take care of itself, which is a, a wonderful thing. If you focus on what you're giving to other people by being the best you possible, you don't really have to worry where the money's gonna come from because that will kind of fall naturally come after that. And um, so I think my parting words to you, and if you like this video and would like to see more similar videos aimed at helping you feel better more often, then as I say, please subscribe, please like, write a comment below. I love it when people comment. And maybe even give me some suggestions of things I could make future videos about, because I love hearing what you guys have to say too. But my parting words for you today are simply this. Be you, everybody else is taken. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now. Ba -da -da. Ba -da -da.